Welcome to this episode of Health Reversion. You're here with Adrian, and in this episode, we're going to be discussing Earth Angel Nutrition. Now, there are a lot of labels and ways to describe these particular beings. Could be indigo children, could be star seeds, could be crystal children, way showers, wanderers. There's a whole range of different labels and varying characteristics, I admit. Ultimately though, what they all have in common is a deep, deep sense of their surroundings from both an emotional and energetic perspective and they have a highly sensitive physical body. This video will look at some of the misconceptions out there to help with clearing out the misinformation and the clever strategies to sabotage these particular beings. Unfortunately, there's been a great deal of misinformation circulating around on this planet. And that has been the case for thousands of years. But as we can sense that things are really ramping up right now and particularly up into 2022, this misinformation has come in the form of the vegan or plant-based diet movement. I'm happy to be called out here. I'm happy to be trolled. I think it's important that the truth gets out there. Now, if a person can honestly state with their hand on their heart that they are thriving in their life on an exclusive plant-based diet, that is wonderful got no arguments and I wish that person well to continue on on that journey. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm a little bit jealous actually. I'd love to live exclusively on a plant-based diet. However, for many of us on this planet, the hard and sometimes sobering reality is that some form of animal product will need to be consumed in order to achieve those optimum levels of vitality, energy, and also to give the brain the greatest chance of also operating at an optimum level. Now it could be said that each person on the planet has some angelic qualities, and that's true, we're probably all earth angels here. But as we know, there are some that are definitely more highly tuned and have specific capabilities and it's these individuals that we need to support particularly around their nutrition and here are some suggestions for in fact of how to do that so the first one is natural and artificial food chemicals so these could be in the form of artificial flavors artificial colors it could be salicylates, which are naturally occurring, oxalates, again naturally occurring, uh, glutamate, amines. There's, there's a whole range of natural and artificial chemicals in our food. And for a highly sensitive being, when these levels reach even just moderate levels, it can wreak havoc on their system. And when I say wreak havoc, not only can it make them physical, physically ill, but it can affect their emotions and it can also cut off that connection that they have to source, which can be quite unique and quite important for them to sustain. So I know it's a bit of a pain, but when we're looking at consuming processed foods, we really do need to check that ingredients list and look out for those hidden nasties, something like rosemary extract you may think oh that's just rosemary some it's nothing wrong with that but how do you know like how do you know what else is contained in that extract spice extract again what what constitutes spice extract what else is in spice extract so these are the things that we need to look out for and if you can radically reduce or even eliminate them number two is looking as much as possible to have food in its natural state. 
Now this doesn't mean that you can't cook the food or steam the food or bake the food. It's more about keeping it as close to as na how nature has provided it to us. This can be very calming to a sensitive system where, for example, having steamed potatoes with a little bit of butter can be much easier and much more calming on the digestive tract than having you know, French fries from a particular takeout or chips from a deep fryer at the local fish and chip shop. I know those foods are great, I know we crave them, but again, for a sensitive system, it can wreak havoc and it can potentially put them out of sync and put them out of alignment for, for several days. And that can be quite taxing for them. And it also means that the people around them uh, will be affected as well. So please consider providing the foods and the drinks as close as possible to how nature has provided it and keeping them in their natural state. The next point, number three, is animal protein. I understand that there are a number of proponents and big influences out there that are suggesting and recommending that a plant-based diet or even a fruitarian diet or even a breatharian way of living is, is best for our earth angels and our sensitive souls. And it may be, if it is, again, we need to do these experiments on ourselves and if eating a plant-based diet does bring out the best in you, then wonderful, great, keep going with that. Well, if you're raising a child and you're noticing that as well, wonderful. But the brain does require animal fats to produce uh, hormones. It also requires it to produce neurotransmitters and animal fat can also be quite calming to the system, quite grounding. Now we're not talking about lots of meat here. We're not talking about breakfast, lunch and dinner involving meat. What we're looking at is we're looking at just small portions that can be included in a plant-based diet. So for example, having a little bit of grass-fed butter if possible, added to the cooking that you're doing in the evening. A very small, high quality piece of organic meat, it could be some lamb, it could be some beef. If that's something that you just can't stretch to, that's fine. Look at some ocean caught fish, preferably wild ocean caught. Just some form of animal protein to allow those neurotransmitters to be produced to allow the hormones to be produced and to give that somewhat of a grounding effect sometimes because these highly sensitive beings might be just whirlwinding, winning and it's great to be up there but it's also a fact on this planet that we do need to participate in the physical world and those small amounts of animal products even if it's just a couple of times a week just a small piece of red meat some fish a couple of days later, maybe some lamb or some chicken or some turkey, just small portions, doesn't have to be a lot. Just incorporating that can make a world of difference. And the last suggestion is to do with medications and supplements. Now, obviously, and I want to be clear here, if there are prescribed medications and you have complete faith in the medical establishment and those medications are for particular diseases or underlying health conditions that require those medications, even if it's just for the short term, absolutely you would, you would keep doing that and you would talk to your doctor or talk to your medical practitioner um, before ever getting off those. However, if you have been recommended certain pharmaceutical chemicals, then and it's not an, a necessity, then this could be the way that you can really see some improvement. Uh, if it's yourself, if it's a friend of yours, if it's your child, where we take out those, it's just another form of a numbing agent that is severing its connection to source 
and it's sabotaging that individual's abilities. It really is. That is the fact of the matter. There is a role for the medical establishment to play and it's often a short-term role. So I'll leave that with you to do some further research. And supplements. Now I know there's a huge craze about supplements. Get your vitamin C, you're not getting enough sun, get vitamin D, you're not getting enough animal products, get your B12 shot, all kinds of supplements. And some of these supplements, absolutely, if they are working for you, if you've noticed and you can make that direct correlation between the supplement and the improvements that you've had, wonderful. But the suggestion here today, final suggestion, is to actually do away with the supplements. Now I know that's going to be a bit of a stretch for some people and it's quite hard to, to comprehend that somebody here that's trying to speak about health is, is saying to, to not take supplements. All I'm saying is to give it a try for a period of time because a lot of the supplements have questionable manufacturing processes. Their raw ingredients are sometimes from, well, the petroleum industry for one and others just quite frankly just made, made in a laboratory and the body a lot of the time doesn't actually know, like it might recognise parts of the calcium and then parts of the vitamin D but nature provides all of the vitamins and minerals through our regular food sources so again having those, that variety in the diet Having those animal products, even if it's just small amounts throughout the week, you're going to be getting the levels of nutrition that you require. And if you want to work with somebody that is highly uh, acclaimed and, and, and has the credentials and the experience and a, a range of clients that can say, hey, this person knows what they're talking about and they're recommending a particular supplement, then wonderful. Go for it. Give it a try. See how it is for yourself. But suggestion here is to actually do away with supplements for a period of time and just see if this has any effect. So some final comments. I know there's been a lot of marketing and a lot of encouragement to eat high vibrational fruit foods such as fruit and vegetables and there's no doubt that they are high vibe and they have a, a reduced toxic load compared to if they're organic compared to uh, conventional raised meat. So I understand the arguments. I understand the arguments around animal cruelty. It is awful in the slaughterhouses. I've been in there many a times through previous work. I've seen what happens. It is awful. However, there are a range of movements across the world that are seeking to make that life for the animal that much more enjoyable so that it can actually have a really good life here, smelling the air, eating the green grass, having the sun on its back, and then giving up its life for the sustenance of us. And that there is something that we should be really grateful for and support those particular ways of producing animals, whereby it's a little bit kinder and they're not just simply there like a battery or like a stuck inside a, a, a stockyard where there's no green grass they're all bunched up together I understand the whole animal cruelty movement and I completely agree but I'm also wanting to face the fact that animal protein animal fats are essential for many of us here on the planet we're part from here and that's potentially where the need comes from and we're part from somewhere else so we're a hybrid and while other dimensions and other worlds don't even require food this one does and that's where you are right now this little blue planet planet called earth which is currently in the third dimension and there's debate as to whether we're going to a different dimension maybe things will change there but for right now in 2022 this is where we're at and we might need to make peace with the fact that having a balanced diet will involve the consumption 
of animal protein and fats. I'd like to thank you for watching until the end of this video. If you didn't get anything out of this video, it's great to get that feedback, so give it a thumbs down. If you did get something out of this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. In the meantime, I ask that you keep well and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.